So this is a scenario. My client comes up to me telling me that they need a promotion video for an athlete that they're sponsoring. They're telling me that it's up to me to come up with an idea and a concept for the video. What do I do? So Oakley here jumped the other day because he was so happy when he was getting his food. And then he fractured his leg. Yes. That's not something you should do with your clients, right? Break their legs. I've had this channel for years and it's not until recently that people actually have been texting me or telling me that they've learned from my channel. This morning I got a text from one of my friends who is a great photographer and he just started making videos and he told me that he's been using my channel as an inspiration or that he's been learning from my videos. That is awesome. So I asked him, what do you want to learn from this channel? What more can I offer? And then he told me that he would love to hear the process of how I make a story from the idea or from my client approaching me to the final result. I thought I would use a project that I made this summer as an example on how my workflow is when approaching a project like this. For me hänger resultat och trivsel samman. När jag är trygg på mitt eget utstyr, egna färdigheter och mina förberedelser har jag det mycket bättre. Då vet jag att jag kan prestera. Det samma är viktigt för mig när jag är på sjön. Jag liker att ställa förberett och vara trygg på vatten. Med askladden stolar jag på båten och då är resten upp till mig själv. Akkurat så är lika. The process of making a video like this obviously depends on the client's wishes, their needs and also how much they want to take part in the process of making it. Getting all the creative freedom is obviously the dream as a filmmaker, but as a commercial filmmaker, that's not always the case. That was actually the case with this one. All I needed was a yes from their marketing agency. If they were in on it, I was good. So the first thing I do with a project like this is ask myself, what do we want to say? What is the message? What do we want the viewer to be left with. So we wanted to have this link between what Svede is doing as a, a professional speed skater and Oscar Ladin who is making boats or building boats. Finding the link between the object and the object kind of. Is it subject or object? Subject or the two parties in this case was key to making a good story. And this brings me into the most important part about making such a promotion video is that you do need a story. If you can't have your viewer feel like they're watching something going from one place to another and have this in Norwegian we say like this red thread. <laughs> oh, red thread is also in English. The American helped me out here. So you have this red thread throughout your story. <laughs> it, it, it's, imper it's imperative to making a good video. Oh, hey, I hope you find this video interesting. While you're at it, like before I continue more, why, why don't you subscribe to my channel and like this video? Okay, let's get back to it. As an athlete, you need to have the confidence to perform when you're on the start. So. If Svede did not know that his gear was okay, or if he did not know that his preparations were good enough, he would probably not perform as well. And the same thing goes for being on sea, which is like obviously a question of safety. You want to have a good time on the ocean or on the water, but if you're not feeling safe, you're not getting the same experience, right? So linking these two things of safety, preparations, feeling confident, having those things together that kind of made the foundation for our story in this case.
So I needed to get the yes or the go from the client, which was in this case, their marketing or advertising agency. And what I needed to do was present the storyboard. So I told them that I want this and this and this to be in here. This is the voiceover that I think we can use. When I got the yes from them, we could start filming. So I went up to Hallmar where Sveti was for a training camp. Went to the locker room where I thought that we can make get this American story vibe of him changing, preparing, getting it moody with some backlight and not making it too complicated, but still getting this feeling of him really preparing. Just checking his skates, seeing if everything was okay, getting dressed, which is actually his last preparation It's going to, onto the ice, but to a lot of people it will feel like these are his preparations. I feel like this illustrates all the work he's been putting in over the last year or years. In terms of lighting for this one, I wanted to go for a simple setup. And I really believe in making it simple. You don't need to make it super complicated. We have this light here. I was actually planning on using much more light, but I don't think we need that. So I think this might be enough because all I want to do is make a backlight on him. We're gonna film him from the other side where we have the shadow light. Thank you. Um, yeah, let's see how it goes. In a lot of videos, they will tell you that you need all these lights, all these things to make a good or well-lit scene. Yes, you do need that in some cases, but sometimes you only need one light source and I love backlighting things. And then I use this. There we go, there you can see it. And you have fog on a can, which is pretty convenient. Anyways, having it more moody just because of this, making it more cinematic, actually had to take down the lights that were actually there, like the normal normal lights that they have in, in the building and replace them with my tubes. What we're doing is that we're taking these down because these lights, lights suck and we're using mine instead, that one. So the shots did not actually come out as good as I wanted to, and this is not the shot I'm the most happy with in this production. Just want to emphasize that using your own lights instead of the lights that are actually there, that is always necessary because in 99% of the cases, the lights that we use for our normal use is not good enough for our film. And so the next part of the production was obviously filming Sveta on the boat, which we did a couple of weeks later in Bergen. And I used a lot of drone shots because they just looked better and it's kind of hard to get these super cool shots of Sveta on the boat, making it seem dramatic. And the drone shots served as a dramatic shot in a way. I wish I didn't use this shot in it because it kind of takes it down a bit where we're on a top and I wish I had more fast pace in it because we've been building this up. Anyways, what I think was crucial to making this video was obviously the build up with the voiceover, but also the ch choice of music. Because as you can tell, I will just play this part. Då vet jag att jag kan prestera. it really works well together. So when the music changes, we get to the water and it gets more dramatic, more action. I think without this, the video would have been maybe 50% of what it actually is. And as the last part of the shooting or the production, we needed to have Sveti's voice. We probably should have filmed ourselves when doing this, but Sveti was sitting under a blanket with this microphone the Sennheiser MKH416. Having your subject making a voiceover can be really weird because he or she is not used to making a voiceover. And as an athlete, that is not something you do every day. I suggest really getting to know each other and do the voiceover last because that will probably be the part of the production where you need his or her trust the most. When it comes to post-production, I started looking at the shots already in Hamar when I did the first shots. I added some music trying to see if it worked because I really need to, to see if the shots work with music. Otherwise, it doesn't, obviously, it doesn't work. 
when we made the first shots and I saw that this worked out pretty well, I knew what I wanted for the last part of the production. So even though I had a plan, the plan was more clear to me after doing the first shots and having it in Final Cut Pro. If you're shooting over several days, have a look at your shots because that might fuel some new ideas or make you reconsider. Having a plan is great, but changing that plan is just as important as following it because sometimes you get new ideas and sometimes you see that some things will work better in a different way than you first planned. So I guess in this production I had a lot of good shots to work with and that made it easier in post because I could just add them all together and I had a good plan which made it simple. So the post-production part of making a video like this can be super easy especially if you know beforehand how you want it and you have a clear picture in your head. Sometimes I find myself feeling like the post-production is too easy. It's usually been because I've been doing a good job planning beforehand and also sticking to the plan. Just to be clear, I always make some changes. So when the product is finalized, I find the best way to check if I'm happy with it is to have someone watch it while I'm watching it too. Because as soon as I'm showing it to my girlfriend and I'm standing next to her while she is looking at it, I can tell that, oh, that needs to be different. That needs to be cut a bit before or that shot needs to last a bit longer. So in this case, I sent the product to the client and they were very happy with it. So I didn't really need to do a lot of changes. This is an example of how I'm working when I get full freedom on a project. So if your client comes up to you saying, we need a video about this, do your thing, then hopefully this video can be helpful to you. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this was helpful. I hope you learned something and please let me know if there's anything you want me to share or make a video about. Because after all, that's why I'm doing this, to help you become a better filmmaker. See ya.